It is one of the most widely used metals in the world. Every day, around 200,000 tons of aluminum are produced. The United States alone consumes more than 4,600,000,000 kilos per year. To meet this enormous demand, millions of tons of ore must be processed. But how does a reddish rock transform into one of the world's most valued metals? We visited the largest bauxite mine on the planet to discover how aluminum is made and where it comes from. Civilization could not survive without it. This engineering marvel is everywhere. It is an integral part of airplanes, cars, and high-voltage cables that deliver electricity to our homes. Unlike iron, which rusts and deteriorates over time, aluminum forms an oxide layer on its surface that protects it from corrosion. It is three times lighter than steel. Thanks to its low density and high strength, it is the primary material used in aircraft manufacturing. But it wasn't until 1807 that British chemist Humphrey Davy first identified a metal in a salt called alum. Identifying it was the easy part, but isolating the metal proved to be a major challenge. It took about 20 years before Danish chemist Hans Christian Ørsted managed to extract it. However, the process was so complicated and expensive that, until the early 20th century, aluminum was more valuable than gold. Napoleon III even used aluminum cutlery for his most important guests, while others had to settle for gold utensils. Everything changed in 1886 when a discovery made aluminum accessible and affordable. Two scientists working independently, Frenchman Paul Herold and American Charles Martin Hall, developed an electrochemical extraction process that is still used today. They discovered that by dissolving aluminum oxide in a salt called cryolite and applying electricity, the oxygen atoms separate, leaving pure aluminum behind. This method enabled mass production of aluminum at a much lower cost, revolutionizing the industry. But where does aluminum come from? It lies just beneath our feet, attracting miners as the most abundant metal on Earth's surface. It makes up 8% of the Earth's crust. However, aluminum does not exist as a pure element in nature. Unlike gold and silver, it is not found in nuggets or veins. It can only be extracted from reddish bauxite deposits. The largest bauxite deposits are in Australia, Guinea, Brazil, and Jamaica. Alcoa's Huntley Mine is located in the middle of the Australian mountain range. These mountains are mostly composed of bauxite, making it the largest bauxite mine in the world. Around 23 million tons of ore are extracted here each year. However, most of it cannot be accessed without first breaking through a 5-meter deep underground rock barrier. To achieve this, explosives equivalent to demolishing a 10-story building are used. When a blast is carried out, the rock is first drilled and then filled with an explosive made from ammonium nitrate combined with fuel. Between 700 and 900 tons of ammonium nitrate are used each month. Every day, thousands of tons of aluminum oxide containing ore are blasted. Each explosion clears 2 hectares of land and releases between 50,000 and 100,000 tons of ore. Each ton of ore contains only a few kilograms of aluminum. A massive amount of bauxite is needed to produce a single ingot. About 4 tons of bauxite are required to obtain 1 ton of aluminum. Extracting this mineral requires billions of dollars in investment. Today, aluminum is priced at around $2.50 per kilogram, and the mining industry invests in large-scale equipment. This is the world's largest shovel, costing over $20 million, making it one of the most expensive as well. The haul trucks can carry up to 270 tons of bauxite, and the shovel moves one ton in just three scoops. A truck arrives empty and leaves fully loaded in just one minute. The ore is then unloaded at the processing plant. But how does a reddish rock become one of the world's most widely used metals? To extract aluminum from the ore, a refining process called the Bayer process is used. A conveyor belt deposits the ore into a massive rotating drum. Inside, enormous steel balls grind it into a fine powder. The bauxite powder is then mixed with a caustic fluid that separates the aluminum oxide from the sludge, resulting in a concentrated aluminum oxide solution. And here comes the astonishing part. The solution dries into sandy crystals called alumina. This is the substance from which aluminum is made. The next step is to separate aluminum from oxygen. 
To do this, the Illumina is transported to an Alcoa production plant. A fully loaded ship leaves the port every three days. The alumina it carries will be smelted into 35,000 tons of pure aluminum. It is shipped as quickly as possible since any delay in the supply chain increases aluminum costs. Every three days, they receive a ship carrying around 1,500 tons of alumina. Then, the entire ship's contents are vacuumed out. A giant vacuum, similar to a household vacuum cleaner but much larger, extracts around 300 tons per hour, emptying the ship in just five hours. The extracted alumina is placed on conveyor belts. Once distributed to the factory, the alumina is introduced into large electrolytic cells containing molten cryolite. Cryolite lowers alumina's melting point from 2050 degrees Celsius to about 950 degrees Celsius. To obtain pure aluminum, the oxygen atoms that strongly bind it must be separated. This process requires an enormous amount of electricity. That's why aluminum is often called solid electricity, as its production consumes vast amounts of energy. Approximately one-third of the cost of a kilogram of aluminum comes from electricity consumption. The electricity used in the plant to power the electrolytic cells is enough to supply 300,000 households. More than 340 megawatts of electricity are consumed annually to produce aluminum. In the electrolytic cells, a low-voltage, high-intensity electric current is applied through carbon anodes and a cathode, initiating electrolysis. Electricity flows through copper bars connected to the electrolytic cells. The aluminum oxide molecules in the containers consist of two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. The electric current breaks the bonds, separating the atoms. The oxygen rises to the top of the container and reacts with the carbon anodes, forming carbon dioxide, while the denser aluminum sinks to the bottom of the cell after the electrolysis process. The molten aluminum, at approximately 950 degrees Celsius, is separated from the cryolite using a vacuum pumping system. This process is carried out in a continuous cycle every 36 hours to extract metal from the electrolytic cells. Once the liquid aluminum is extracted, it is transferred to a transport crucible, a thermally insulated container designed to maintain the metal's temperature and prevent premature solidification in the refining furnaces. The aluminum is then reheated to remove remaining impurities through processes like filtration, which helps eliminate unwanted elements such as hydrogen and oxides. Next, the pure aluminum is poured into molds to form ingots. It then undergoes a cooling process to solidify without structural defects. Once ready, the aluminum ingots are transported to various industries where they are transformed into product for sectors like automotive, aviation, and construction. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning.